Hey yo, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. Thanks for tuning in to Omni Dogs Vault, and I'm Omni Dog. So, five books I loved and five books I loathed. Uh, these are five books that um, didn't get on my top 28 list for 2021. Uh, so, they need to be presented for you, the viewing public. And then, those are my recommendations. The five books I loathed, first of all, my opinion only. Uh, I don't follow any kind of social media really to, to uh, give me an idea of what other people think. I like to form my own opinions. So you, the books I don't like, you could um, sample them on Hoopla or digitally or whatever, and it turns out you love them. So it's just my opinion. But I feel like my job is not only to recommend books to you, but to keep books away from you that I don't think. Because I, I, spend, I buy all my comics just about, but the thing we have in common, whether you get yours free or, or you pay for them, is time. I want to, you to spend your reading time really well and not get done with a book and say, I want my 45 minutes back. Time is something that's precious to us all. So, yada, 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 shut up, Omni Dog, and talk about what you love. First book I'll talk about. Uh, Minister of Comics and I made it our mission last year to read as many James Bond books, but, well, it was a Felix Leiter book by James Robinson, as many, uh, and this is just a small sampling, as many James Bond books as we could from Dynamite. You can stick your hand in my shelf. I have a shelf just for these. Stick your hand in there and pick out, pick out any book, and it's awesome. Awesome to excellent to fantastic. There have been no duds. We've got authors like Andy Diggle, Greg Pak, James Robinson, uh, Warren Ellis. Um, did I say Andy Diggle? Yeah, I did. Uh, and this one's by, who's this one by? This was good. Oh, Alice, Alice Cott, uh, The Body. And any of these are fantastic. This is by Diggle, Kill Chain, and Hammerhead. That's one of the rare ones that uh, one sort of kind of informs the other. Same with the Warren Ellis ones. But there's plenty of one-shots. And there's um, an omnibus... I don't know if it's still in print for the Warren Ellis stuff. Um, these are so great. And if you if you like anything, you know, crime related, uh, inter international spy stuff, it's really true to the character, first of all. Um, I For the character you have in your mind, he's not doing stuff out of character. He's doing cool James Bond stuff, but uh, kind of on a relatable level. Um, so I recommend all the Dynamite books. This isn't even half of them, but all the Dynamite James Bond books. Sometimes they even come with a signature in them. This one? Yeah. I don't know how I ended up with a signature in this one, but here's Andy Diggle's signature. <laughs> it's awesome. So Definitely, definitely check out and write me if you want um, in a comment or um, I will or I'll just go ahead and list all of them in the description where I list all the books and how to get them. OK, so that's one book I loved. How about a book I loathed in 2021? Most of them are on, four of them are on my iPad, so I'm going to have to do some scrambling around. Uh, this one's getting ready to go to Second and Charles, but I held it to at least show you an example of something I was really excited to read. Geo from Week in Geekdom and I were both excited to read it. It's Black Stars Above from, is it Vault or Aftershock? I think it's Vault. Yeah, Vault. I've read a lot of Vault stuff, and I really liked it. This is the clinker in the bunch. Uh, uh, a young woman out in, like, Boondock, Canada, 
in the 1800s with no escape is given a strange box and told to take it to this really scary territory in the snow. Uh, don't open the box or bad things will happen. Uh, and then you run smack dab into the middle of this crazy person's diary. Uh, I, <laughs> I couldn't finish this book. It, it was so boring and dull and poorly executed that I had to give up. I, I had to just make the call. I, I want to do something else. Now, it's fair to say, how can you judge the whole book if you didn't finish it? I, I looked at the end pages. It, a book's got to at least, keep, if it's one volume, a book's got to grab my attention by at least halfway through. I'm not reading drudgery for a one-page payoff. When it's a book this thick, that payoff never came with this book um, that I know of. Well, because I quit. Um, so it, it's a fair criticism that you didn't read it all the way through. I couldn't make it all the way through. I wanted something else to do. I wanted to go eat a piece of cheesecake. I wanted to go do anything else but finish this book. So Black Stars Above, that is in my loathe pile books i love let's go to scurry scurry i made a video on it before Whoop. i made a video on just scurry if you're interested in an in-depth review on it it's three books they also come in trade paperback i got these as a kickstarter uh, along with omnicat and these slip covers come uh I think you can still get them from Max Smith's site by Max Smith. Um, and I'll put his website in the description. These books, well, <laughs> I, I, don't, I love stickers. So these came with stickers from Kickstarter. Um, but first of all, the art is remarkably remarkable. It is absolutely gorgeous art. And it's about a colony of mice after some disaster happens and wipes out all the humans, a colony of mice and some other animal friends of theirs are trying to make it in the world. Um, as scavengers, the mice are starting to run out of food because there's no people around to provide them with, uh, you know, scraps. And we've got moose in this and uh, wolves. The animal kingdom is represented really, really well. So, why should you read an anthropomorphic book? Because this is a joy to read. This is why you love comic books. This does stuff that I don't, I feel like just in a prose book, would it work as well? Man, I would miss this art. And the story gets told so compelling you, so compellingly, you get caught up with the characters and care about their lives, even though they're made up mice. You dig, you dig this whole story and you're wondering what's going to happen. And there is a payoff and it's really good. And all three books are excellent. It is part of a continuing story. Um, so I, I will, as I said, put the description uh, for Max Smith's website. Or, and you can also check out a, uh, the, the uh, scurry video I did. Uh, I believe it was sometime last year in 2021. Uh, but that'll give you an idea of why I like it so much. Scurry. Hmm, that brings us to a book I loathed. These are all on my iPad, so I'm going to have to scramble around some. So let's get to a book uh, that was detested worldwide. This won't surprise you. Uh, Lou on Omnibros and I particularly hated this book. Uh, and this book is called, <laughs> no, 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 you got to be careful with these iPads, Spider-Man, I think the storyline's Bloodlines or something. So, they're the authors, J.J. Abrams and Henry Abrams. I'm, I'm not, I, I know you've all heard me rail on this book before. Uh, so I'm not going to keep it long. This book is awful. It's full of... Uh, uh, 
uh, dead ends and plot holes and things that make no sense whatsoever. Uh, I thought this Henry Abrams was like a 12 year old and his dad was helping him realize a dream. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. No, he's like a 25 year old guy and this is nepotism at its worst. This is an abomination. Do not read it at all. Don't, don't read it digitally. Don't spend your money. Don't read it if someone gives it to you. Um, this is awful. This is freaking awful. And it's, it would not be something you'd want to give to a first time comics reader because they'd never go back to comics. So I, maybe I'll put this in the description if you want to buy it, but I mean, I'll put it in the description along with Two Moons Above or whatever it was, Black Stars Above. Two Moons is a good book. That's by, um, who is that by? Two Moons is by uh, Arcudi, John Arcudi. It's good. Uh, where am I? Yeah, I'll put it, these in the description, but I wouldn't get these if I were you. Uh, this was awful. Just, we renamed the uh, Worst Book Award to the Golden Abrams on Omnibros because we hated it so much. Okay, next book that I loved in 2021, Strange Academy. This is an, <laughs> Scotty Young, who is now a person I hate, along with Chip Zdarsky and John Byrne and all those other people that can write and uh, draw. Scott, the, Scotty Young did not draw this. This is Umberto Ramos, whose artwork is spectacular. The idea is that there is a training academy for uh, the characters, kids in the Marvel Universe, no matter whether they're good or evil. I mean, there's Dormammu Jr., Kid Dormammu, or whoever it is. Um, and it, But it's also got Ileana in it. So I love Ileana. But it's got kid versions of all these... Um, you know, bad guys and good guys and Ileana's in it, as I keep repeating. But um, Stephen Strange, you got Brother Voodoo, the Scarlet Witch, Magic, Damon Hellstrom. Damon Hellstrom's written really well in this book. Um, I'd like to see more people tackle him and make him like a snappy, sassy, Mr. Sinister type of character. He can be very interesting if written well. Uh, the artwork's great. The whole idea that there's a, a magic academy that only these kids can get into is fascinating. Um, and it's just completely solid. It is a solid five out of five stars. No half stars, nothing. 10 out of 10. It is awesomely awesome. Now, it's also small. It's compared to... No, no, that's a small book, too. <laughs> Compared to a uh, standard size hardcover, not standard size hard hardcover, standard size trade paperback, you can see it's small. And the second one is small that just came out. Digest size. Now, it could be because they're going for the uh, younger audience, which is great. This is uh, a perfect all-ages book, but I loved it. And I'm uh, many ages, so I highly recommend this. I don't think I can recommend the Strange Academy hardcover that's coming out. Uh, I I gotta find you. You need to before you buy it or pre-order it or anything. Do your due diligence because at, there seems to be questions on the price point as of now. This is the end of January, 2022. There's, uh, it's going to be oversized, but apparently only six issues in color, first six issues in color, and then the first six issues in black and white. I badly want to see this work uh, in oversized hardcover because it's so gorgeous and, and the story is just so fun. But don't pay too much for that oversized hardcover if it comes out. Find out how many issues it's for sure going to be because it's changing all over the place. I know you're going to look at Amazon or, or, or someplace and go, Jess, it's set for this and this and this. It, it, it's not set. Last week we saw it for $75 all the way down to 30. I, and I don't know. So be careful. Wait till it comes out. I wouldn't pre-order this. I'd wait till it comes out. Um, the oversized hardcover. Um, hopefully, uh, 
we'll just get an omnibus, a tiny mini omnibus of this run someday in my lifetime. So this is awesome. I loved it. Pardon me. Here's a book I loathed. I just spit all over the place. I loathed it so much. Daphne Byrne. I, I did a whole series on the Hill House series of books, Hill House Comics. Uh, you can you can find them. I did ba it's called Basketful of Hill House Comics or something like that in my library. This was dreadful. Um, those Hill House comics range from very good to fantastic. I think I I don't even know. I, I must have given it one star on Goodreads because they don't let you give no stars. But this is a book that starts off with a young girl interested in her mother's seances, trying to prove um, that the seances are fake. Then she winds up with a spirit friend who's like, gets, uh, possesses her body at some point. We don't know if he's good or bad. You've got uh, like a professor type character that she runs to for support and help uh, in proving the seance is wrong and, and things. And he turns out to, this is a little girl, she's like 13. And this old lech starts to make a pass at her, which I hated. Um, and, and then it uh, lurches into, I'm getting tired of this trope, bringing our demon father to earth by sacrificing insert the name of the character here i i really don't want to see that trope anymore I, I, bring the dark lord here okay fine uh, write a book about it and then be done with it it it's it, it's not well it's not well done here okay so just save your money skip it there's lots of other hill house books that are great uh but don't on this one uh if you get if you buy this, I'm gonna call up the Dark Lord to come to your house and tear up your comic collection. Another book series that I loved that finished off last year, East to West. These are chunky, beautiful, gorgeous books. What the okay. <laughs> uh Every, everybody knows these books. I don't have to. I don't have to go on very long. If you're not familiar with them, they are um, by Jonathan Hickman, uh, set in um, a, a post-apocalyptic world. Oh, that's fine when it's as interesting as this, because the world's been divided up into um, um, into tr not tribal sectors, but the United States especially uh, has been carved up into um, techno states and stuff like that. Uh, and it deals a lot with the Four Horsemen, um, the apocalyptic mythology, but it throws a whole bunch of really boss ideas into this and they're really well executed. And this thing came to a close last year with book three and I'm happy to say it totally stuck the landing for me. I loved it. Um, now, these books might be out of print right now, but Hickman has said one more reprinting and that's it. That's what I've heard. Obviously, I don't see it on Twitter or anything. I'm just reporting what I heard. So these uh, books, if you want them, wait for the reprint and jump on them because he said this is the last time he's reprinting them. My, these are heavy. My arm is heavy. I mean, my arm is sore just holding these things up. So, 100% east of west, stuck the landing. <laughs> Great story. Easily one of my favorite books of last year. Let's see. What does that leave us? Oh, I know. Another book I loathed. <laughs> okay, these are my Goodreads page because I couldn't find them anywhere else. Um... What should I start with? Let's start with this book. Um, 
I can't, let's see, I don't think I can get it bigger than, okay, I can get it that big from Goodreads. Jim Lives. This is by the same creative team that did Paul is Dead. The idea is they take these rock stars that are, uh, have passed on and makes it seem like their deaths are fake and puts them in different scenarios. Like Jim Morrison here is really in Italy and you see, um, uh, you, you see um, Amy uh, Winehouse waiting tables in the background and, and the idea is they, they 27 years old got to be, fame got to be too much for them so they're hiding out and Jim's up to antics behind the scenes in Italy. It was awful, and so was Paul is Dead. Um, these guys are going to make a trilogy of this. I am not going to read the third one. I don't know what possessed me to read this one after reading Paul is Dead, but there are just tons and tons of weird choices, things that didn't make any sense, plot holes, plot holes galore, Nothing made any sense here. I realize this is comic books and anything goes. That's fine. But they're, connect the dots for me. Don't make me just guess at something that was supposed to have happened. Um, it's just too many plot holes for a cohesive story. And same with Paul is Dead. That was a couple of years ago. Uh, I definitely would not be spending any time with this book uh, if I were you guys. Let's get a last good book series that I loved. And this is no surprise to anybody either because it was very popular. But it's still boss and that's Paper Girls. Look at that boss cover. They've all got something really cool about the covers going on. Um, This is a time travel story. I don't... I, th I feel like a lot of people already know about it, so I don't want to go too in-depth in it uh, for those of you who haven't read it yet. It's about four kids in the, um, uh, I think it's the late 80s, and they're out uh, delivering papers. They've, they've formed sort of a pack, and they're delivering papers in the morning before school. That was a job. I had that job, but it was after school. We had an evening paper. Um, so the art's by Cliff Chang, and it's great. And it's a time, I can tell you, it's a time travel story um, where they uh, find cool gadgets, run into weird monsters, and end up seeing future versions of themselves. I don't want to, that probably spoils it for somebody, but it does, it's not that big of a deal. But the future's whacked out of its skull and they have to decide who to trust. The girls, the paper girls have to decide who to trust throughout the whole story. And you have to figure that out too. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn writes this perfectly. The art is great. The presentation on these books is exactly what you want in your library. Just something gorgeous like this. I need to move these down. Well, they're kind of tall, but I need to move these down to someplace, like make a whole shelf of them just facing outwards. They're so great. Um, but yeah, Paper Girls, 100%. Definite recommend. That can be a blind buy for you. Go out, read it, enjoy your life. You'll be happy. Here's the last book that made me unhappy in 2021. You've heard us talk about it before because it snapped up three of us at one time. Minister of Comics on a Sunday sent me a text. Check this book out. It sounds like you might like it. Okay. It's an indie looking book. So I send it to Omnicat and I said, hey, we're reading this book. Check it out. And she was right around uh, her house at that time. And she said, okay. So all three of us read it on a Sunday. And all three of us were really unhappy with this book, The Down River People. It starts out well enough. Uh, okay, I don't, 
I don't have the art to show you, but I mean, I, the art's just middling anyway. But um, it, it starts out with an interesting concept it, with sort of a, um, uh, a, a concept with a, like a mysterious girl. And it takes the hardest pivot to, right into the tank, right at the uh, middle of it. And it goes nowhere. It, it it explodes. It just it just it, it's like um, a, a super ball in a really tight space. It goes but joinga 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 joinga. It goes all over the place and makes no sense whatsoever. Um, and now I can't even remember if it involved. I'm pretty sure it involved a girl. I'm try. I reread this in the summer, but it was not good. It was awful because it had a really interesting first half concept and then drove right off the cliff into superb mediocrity, if that's such a thing. It is an example of how not to write a book. You do not want to lose your audience halfway through the book. I just kept reading it because I was like, wait, how are we getting back to that part that was interesting in the beginning? Where are we going? Who are these people now? And I I not only could not care about the characters, I actively disliked everybody in the book. So I would advise you, oops, I got a sticky note caught there. So I'd advise you not to read the Downriver people. So there we have it. The five books I loved and loathed in 2021. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your likes. Please hit the like button. Feel free to add a comment if you like, if you care to. And I always respond to comments. So peace and love, peace and love. Thank you so much.